Welcome to Loop TV. I'm your host, Gene Munster, joined by Loop's Doug Clinton. Our topic today is Tesla's December quarter 2021 deliveries. And I'll kick it off with just the numbers. They delivered just over 308,000 vehicles. The street was looking for 267,000. Uh, that means that they grew deliveries at 71% year over year, and the street was expecting 47% uh, growth. I'm gonna pause there and bring in Doug and just give your first reaction when you saw these numbers. I think your first reaction is probably going to be more important than mine since you know Tesla better than I. But I think the bottom line to me is when you see a number beat like this, usually stocks go up when uh, you have forward expectations built around estimates that were too low. I mean, you, you have to kind of revise how you think about the future going forward. That being said, for me, I think there's still a lot priced in the Tesla stock. So the short term picture is pretty easy. I would be shocked if the stock isn't up on the news. But I think you just have to kind of balance. I always come back to cash flow. You know, what is sort of priced in terms of delivering on cash flow over the next decade plus for Tesla uh, versus, you know, this one quarter, which was obviously very impressive. And my uh, sense on it is it was impressive. I would describe it as uh, insane upside. Uh, why insane? You know, for Tesla to do 71% when the street's looking for 41% growth. Uh, as they were ramping and surprising, uh, that would be uh, really good. But the part that really stood out, of course, is that uh, the production side here. And uh, so, you know, my my sense is that uh, you know we talk about is something news or noise. And typically, when you have production numbers or iPhone units, that it's typically noise in a given quarter. You want to kind of think about the bigger arc. But I think the bigger arc here, this is news around this. And I think there are two takeaways from my perspective why this is uh, was an impressive quarter or delivery number for Tesla. Number one is that uh, they're actually been able to produce uh, that many vehicles with the kind of production headwinds, enough said. Number two is that they are still uh, not able to keep up with supply. Uh, Model 3s, the best, uh, uh, the earliest deliveries you can get on a Model 3 is March, so we're three months out. And a Model Y, it's showing July, uh, so six, seven months out. Uh, that's a little bit better than what Rivian's showing a year plus out, but we're clearly not at a point of, of even really close to sensing what the underlying demand is. And when I put all this together, I made we had made a prediction that uh, Tesla would deliver between 1.2 and 1.3 million vehicles for 2022. And I think that it's going to be, uh, this is not just a December quarter phenomenon, what we're seeing here. I think we're going to continue to see uh, either number one, the street numbers have to come up measurably above that 1.3 million number, or Tesla's going to be beating the numbers. And so um, maybe just kind of bringing it back to the, on the production side, uh, did anything stick out uh, from from you on that? You, you talked about kind of the big upside to the numbers, but uh, uh, was was it particularly uh, potent because of the production, or is your view that uh, it's still a relatively small number relative to uh, how many cars that Volkswagen makes and Ford makes? So it's not as big of a deal. Well, it's it's definitely an impressive number. I think what's also impressive is you look at some of the the supply issues that other manufacturers have had, and obviously, I mean, I'm sure Tesla is dealing with them in certain ways. We've seen, I think, earlier in the year them eliminating radar in favor of a, a camera only solution for some of their self-driving technology due to some, some part constraints there. So I think they've been creative in figuring out how do they work around some of these supply issues. I think it it's a testament really to them that they are in the big leagues at this point. I don't think that anybody could say that, you know, they're a startup anymore. Maybe you couldn't have said that for a long time now, but I think a couple of years ago, I mean, you rewind even recent history, there were questions of could Tesla ever figure out how to be a mass producer like a GM, like a Ford? I mean, I think they've proven that. And now I think that question goes to Ken Rivian. Can Lucid prove what Tesla has proved? It's taken Tesla more than a decade to do it. But I think that's the big question. I'd be curious what you think about that. Are Rivian and Lucid, can they get there? And how long? I think it's going to be a tough year for those two. And that's a... Uh, somewhat of a bold statement to make when you look at kind of the tailwind the EVs have and you're seeing it in the Tesla numbers. And I think it's going to be a difficult year for those two. I suspect that they're going to fall short of their 
uh, expectations. Uh, Rivian call it uh, 40, 50,000 vehicles, Lucid 20 or 25,000. Um, it, when I see these numbers, I get nervous about that prediction that they're going to fall short. I'm standing behind it because it's just so difficult. I mean, we look back and think about when Tesla was starting to ramp Model 3 production in 2017. Elon obviously referred to that as manufacturing hell. 2019, Elon talked about uh, building a factory. It's 100 times more difficult than building a car. We, for a long time, for years, we've talked about making an EV isn't as simple as just making a, a regular car and that eventually all car companies are going to have to go through the pain that Tesla went through from 2017 and 2018. And I suspect uh, that Lucid and Rivian are going to have some of that. Now, on Rivian's most recent earnings call, they talked about a lot of progress that they've made. They're running ahead of schedule in terms of production, which makes you want to even question my prediction even more. But I just think this is this is a big deal trying to ramp production. And, and we'll see it how it plays out. And here's kind of the funny thing. When we think about uh, the market caps of these companies, as it stood on Friday, is that uh, if you look at the collective market caps for Tesla, Rivian, and Lucid, uh, Rivian and Lucid were about 15% of the market cap of, of those th of those three. Uh, yet, if they hit their production numbers, if they hit their production numbers, they're uh, going to be probably 4% of the total um, the total uh, deliveries uh, for 2022. So, from my my perspective, when I think of Lucid and Rivian, one of the two has to be true. Either uh, they're overvalued or Tesla is undervalued. And I think to try to guess what tesla is going to do in terms of what the stock is going to be up tomorrow over the next year i think it's really difficult to predict that but i think if you look at the arc where this goes over the next five five years i'm still very optimistic about where this company can go um i would uh maybe just uh give it back to you doug for a final word we, we talked about uh 2022 being a, a more difficult year for the broader EVs, not Tesla. We we singled out Tesla as a company that we thought would continue to do well, and we're seeing that. But maybe just if you can uh, close us up on a word about just the the uh, our, our prediction about just maybe the broader theme. It would seem that uh, you know 2022 is off to a good start when it comes to EVs. Uh, why do we think that it could be a little bit of a cooler year when you look at the the total theme when you look at Ford, GM? Um, Rivian, uh, Lucid, all of them together. Yeah, I think you look back at 21 and it was really a banner year for EVs. Uh, I mean, the, the way that Ford stock moved, GM, kind of across the board. I mean, automotive had a great year and it was really driven by this EV theme. I think everybody sees that EVs are the future. I think that the is- The top, I would interject, it's the top EVs. If you look at the top, uh, if you look at Ford, GM, uh, Ford is up 100, call it 50%. GM, yep. Volkswagen up 50%. Uh, we know what, uh, uh, if we look at uh, uh, Rivian, Lucid, and Tesla and their pre uh, valuations, uh, they're up 220%. Right. But the bottom, right. if you go below the top five market caps, they were down 45% in 2000. That's right. You know, I think that, I mean, to me, I think about the market kind of in aggregate, and I always have had this theory it, that there are some parallels to the smartphone market, like we saw with Apple versus Samsung and everybody else. Like, it is a very clear dichotomy. Apple takes the vast majority of the profit in the smartphone ecosystem, and everybody else is second fiddle. When you think about the automotive space, that's a much more competitive, established industry. The thing that I am concerned about is you know, everybody's gonna have a self-driving solution. Everybody's gonna have an EV solution. They're all going to be very competitive. On the margin, you're gonna see some differences in terms of the product. But I wonder, is there going to be an Apple equivalent that really takes most of the market? And you have also RANs that really aren't that valuable. I mean, you look at a company like an LG, right? I mean, they, from a smartphone perspective, they don't generate a whole lot of enterprise value from that business relative to Samsung or Apple. And so I think, as I think about the broader industry, you mentioned, you know, kind of the top five, maybe eight players saw a really great year last year. I don't know that you're going to have five or eight massive winners. You could have five or eight players that all participate, or you might have one. Either way, I think the industry is, has given a lot of credit for future growth for EVs that I think they may rethink a little bit this year. I guess I said, uh, given last word, I'm going to uh, jump in for a last, last word. 
I agree with that. I think this is going to be a show me year for deliveries, whether it's the Ford uh, F-150 Lightning or whether it's uh, what's going to happen with Rivian and Lucid. I think uh, Tesla is showing that it's in a good spot. And uh, if I'm going to take the over under, I think Tesla ends up being the the iPhone of the the EV industry. Uh, you're probably on a slightly different page on that. That's what makes us great is we balance each other out. And the best thing about uh, these uh, kind of views of the future is eventually they play out and we get to see how it how it ends up uh, ends up working. Either way, however you think that this plays out, it's still an impressive uh, delivery number for Tesla and uh, give them all the credit for doing that in a difficult environment. So on behalf of Doug and Gene and Tesla's uh, December delivery numbers on Loop TV, bye for now.